Welcome to Coin Geek Backstage. I'm Kurt Wilker Jr. sitting with Siggy Oscarson, who is the lead developer on the Terranode project at BSVA. He's also something of an old friend, but uh, that doesn't mean I won't ask him the hard questions. Siggy, Hi. you just hopped off the stage and you were sharing the stage with a number of heavy hitters from what you might think of as old world enterprise level infrastructure players. Uh, what's it like sitting with people from Aerospike and AWS and talking about uh, innovating blockchain into a, you know, I don't even know, 10x, 100x multiple of what they're capable of today? Great, actually. I think the, uh, um, the idea that we are against these people that are very different or anything like that is crazy. We are working very closely with AWS and Aerospike to get this done. And that close relationship has helped us to get the results we get so quickly. That's very, very important. The idea that these are these are different entities that we don't work with each other. The whole idea of that, you know, we're going to get rid of the banking industry and the blockchain. No, we're going to we're going to work with these people. We're going to enable new types of businesses. We're going to enable efficiencies, and and so it's 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 great to get the opportunity to work with these people. professionals, real professionals, really good. For sure. So as uh, the the blockchain economy makes its way into that sort of global data center model, uh, what do you think that does to the blockchain model where? Uh, you need to be running your node on your mom's computer at uh, your mom's boyfriend's house's basement or, or however that works. Are we, are we, are we unfairly putting a trillion dollars of market cap out of business? And you know, have we have we thought about the consequences to, uh, to to those types of people? I have to bite my lip a little bit now before <laughs> I answer your question and try to be a little bit. You know, um, it's crazy. Future of finance running on a Raspberry Pi in somebody's basement. You can't you can't you can't come up with that this idea of decentralization, right? That's where it starts from. Decentralization, is everybody runs their own node. But that's, of course, complete nonsense. If you have something like a, a Terra node and you have 10, 20, 30 miners running that, BTC runs at four miners at the moment. I think four pools, they have 80, 90% of the hash rate. So we have 10 miners. That's decentralized enough for that layer, but the actual decentralization is a layer top. It's, it's the users interacting with each other. It's not people with nodes leeching off the network. They're actually making that network worse with their slow computers. That's not the, the de decentralization we should be looking for in blockchain. Yep. And you know, and we agree on this, I think, as well, but it's, it has to be said again. Oftentimes when you're talking to, about some, talking to somebody, you're talking about something like decentralization, you have to realize that you're actually not talking about the same type of decentralization. So you can get, at a certain level, you get into fights about what actually you're talking about, but if you step back, you say, oh my, you're actually talking about decentralization of miners, and I'm talking about decentralization of user interactions. That's a completely different thing. And I think that's what we need to start highlighting more as well, yeah. those differences. So to, to play devil's advocate a little bit, you know, we talk about uh, Bitcoin. Uh, one of the old adages has been that Bitcoin is a solution looking for a problem, which is why it is just sort of morphed every couple of years. It, it, it's a new thing to a new group of people. It seems like every cycle, we haven't actually disrupted anything that, that really deserved to be disrupted. Are, are we continue? is this just the next stab at, hey, can we solve something so that we can continue to work in this weird niche economy? Or, or are we actually solving problems here? I hope we are. <laughs> no, but I think, I think we're not actually solving a problem. We're not solving a new problem. We're not, we're not doing something that's looking for a problem to be solved. This problem actually exists today in society, but we solve them differently, very expensively. Blockchain can do that for nothing. That, I mean, these things exist in the real world. We just have to convince businesses that that is actually much more efficient, faster, and cheaper to do it on a blockchain. The blockchain is a timestamp server. What can you use a timestamp server for? No, something like timestamping your source code. All kinds of things that, you know, in a normal society today is very expensive and cumbersome. And we can do it very, very cheaply and fast. So. We have to change the way that people think about blockchain. Scalable blockchain allows this. If you don't have a scalable blockchain, there's no point. You're not gonna put all your photographs on chain when it costs $5 a piece. No, it doesn't make any sense. The difficulty thing here is a human thing. It's not a technology thing, because we have to convince all the people in their businesses that this is actually gonna make your business more profitable. You reduce costs, you're gonna get more secure, you can be more compliant, and that's where the real benefits of blockchain are gonna come in. Let me just pose a nightmare scenario to you for a moment here. BSV, uh, BSVA spends you know untold amounts of money in testing and developing, and we finally get this product, which I think we're somewhere in the MVP stage anyways, but 
Once this comes all the way out, it's open source. What's to stop a random team who's developing ordinals on Dogecoin from repurposing it slightly, calling it Greyhound node, and, and hey, it's the fastest dog in blockchain, and all of a sudden Dogecoin with its meme ability and all these things just eats our lunch and runs away with it. What, what, what discussions, if any, are, are being had about something like that? In our team, we're not worrying about that too much. We're really focusing on the technology, getting the technology done and making this happen. But of course, this is a thing. But I think this is a, um, a, a thing that's existed for a long time, since the 90s, when Linux came out and we started talking about open source software. So there's companies that are very afraid of their stuff being stolen. But the thing that you can steal is the knowledge and the expertise about that stuff. So you can steal some software, but that doesn't actually mean you can actually successfully implement it or successfully run it. We've developed this in a year, so if the ideas are out there, even if we copyright the software, we patent the software, everything's very, you know, secured. Somebody just write, you know, in China, they'll write it in some other language in no time, and it's you, you have you have no foot to stand on. So the actual work and the actual protection is making the chain valuable and a lot of transactions, and making sure that we're running the businesses on the chain and not worrying too much about the software that's underneath. I think that's just a it's just a tool, and we have to try to make the chain valuable. Is there a model for helping deploy Terranote or helping bridge people from, hey, I think I need a blockchain to now your business is running on the blockchain. Is, is there space for that? Have you heard anything about that? I, I think that's a really necessary component to getting people to understand, uh, hey, build your business on blockchain, but then there's the, the 50 million what ifs that, that exist there. Have you seen anything like that? Uh, is anybody working on anything like that? Or what's your opinion on how we get from, hey, look at this cool technology to, yeah, my business uses this this technology every day? Yeah, that's a complicated question. <laughs> I mean, that's difficult. We were, yeah, I've, I've been trying to do some companies. We, you, you do some stuff. A lot of people are actually trying to build some businesses on top of this, and it's hard. Building a business is hard regardless, right? So maybe maybe the, the key is with uh, entrenched businesses that are actually just looking for doing everything cheaper and faster. Maybe AI is going to be a thing. If the source code is out there and you, uh, as a Gorilla Pool, you can run a miner or a tile run a miner, that's great. You can use that source code, but you can actually start using that open source software to compete as well. And if you're a company, you're, you know, we're Red Hat, we're offering, you know, Terranote, and then I'm going to be Ubuntu, and I'm going to offer Terranote, but I have optimized this and this, I've changed this, I'm using a different storage engine, I'm doing things. So in a sense, the, the competition and that it's open source software enables companies to compete on a different level. Also with the overlay nodes, a lot of the code that comes from Terranote can be used in the overlay nodes. Um, and so you can have a competition on that level, but on the same blockchain, on the interoperable blockchain, yeah. because that creates more value for everybody. If you fork it and you put it in a separate blockchain, both of them are going to be less valuable than if you just build on this thing and we'll make, make that one thing more valuable. It's like, do you want a bigger slice of the pie or do you want a bigger pie? And I think that's much more exciting. What, what will people actually do when we get this software out there? Are they going to be starting to mess with it, hack it, make it optimizable? You know, as a microservices architect, we have about 10 services in there. Are going to replace some of the services with some custom stuff? We're going to get some ASICs in there. We're going to get some hardware stuff. That's going to be exciting. I think that's where the competition should be yep. on one chain. Another thing that's always appealed to me, again, as part of a, a business acquisition or business development strategy is something like Terranote, a, a, a unique, novel, next generation piece of technology and sharing it with companies like Amazon, for example, where you know we've been squawking about uh, scalable blockchains for five, six, seven years in many cases. But we're, we're talking to end users, we're talking to people that really just want to trade tokens and, and whatever, they don't care about that kind of thing. But when you show this technology to companies like Amazon or, or some of the other players that can play in infrastructure, it almost becomes on top of, hey, we're going to be a good client to you, but it also becomes a little bit of a, a sales process in and of itself because you're showing new ideas to important people who are good at bringing product to market. Yeah. Uh, and it, well, actually, Amazon might be the best company in the history of the world at bringing product to market. Uh, do you see that as, as maybe a spillover benefit of working with these companies? Have you seen that sort of thing in, in your work? I haven't seen it, but I've heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Being pedantic. No, uh, yes, yeah, so we've heard that because they're, they're like, what, what the hell are these guys doing? At a certain moment, we had some problems with some networking. We had to contact support. And they're like, you're doing what? <laughs> 
we had a, a long call with both AWS and Aerospec to try to figure things out, but that piqued their interest. These guys are doing something very, very interesting, and they're looking at, okay, is this something that we can actually incorporate into our product suite? Uh, but maybe there's maybe that Terranode itself is not that thing, but if you have a blockchain that has a million transactions a second is scalable, what can you build on top of that? And that's where you start piquing their interest. Kind of overlay nodes, services. I, 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 maybe I'm, I'm going to have a, a caching, timestamping service in my database offering, things like that. And it's actually, it's a, now they can start offering services on top, make some extra money, and it's very cheap and reliable and scalable. So I think that's probably where, it's probably not going to be that much in the mining bit, but I'm, uh, in the overlay bit. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly my point. You know, if Amazon sees the value or, or any other infrastructure player, they start to see that, oh, I, I can offer timestamping as a service. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a, it becomes a very large opportunity for them. And then you're just bringing more minds in. I was talking about the risk of, oh, what if this other blockchain eats our lunch? But in, in reality, we, we, we want them to, and we, we should want those minds to come in and then Basically, mind share comes our direction. It becomes magnetic. Um, is there anything that I've I've missed? Anything you wish I would have asked you? Like, what do you want the viewers of this to, to understand about your work, about Terranode in general, or, or what the purpose of, of even a, a scalable blockchain is? I think one of the interesting things is working with the PSV Association is that we have very uh, a lot of like-minded people like yourself as well that. Um, you know, we're intrigued somewhere between 2009 and 2015, woke up like, this is really interesting technology. This can change the world. But to be able to do that, we have to uh, get it to scale because otherwise everything just dies. All projects are going to just go on there to die. And um, that was taken from us in, uh, in 2017. So we share this vision of a world where we can have a scalable blockchain, a timestamping server, um, we can exchange information, um, we can exchange value across the world, frictionlessly, micropayments, all the good stuff. We, uh, probably a lot of stuff we haven't even thought about yet, but a lot, uh, you know, what drives us is that vision. What drives me is that vision that I got, fell in love with in 2013, personally. And I've been, I, I was very, very dismayed for a long time, and I'm very happy to be able to be part of that journey now, to actually make this happen. And, and, and see what this could actually do to the world. So it's a, it's a much bigger thing than me. It's a much bigger thing than NFTs or you know banks or businesses or anything like that. I think this could be a transformational technology, but it has to scale to do that. Yep. So that scaling part, all the work that we're doing, sometimes it's boring, sometimes it's tedious, oftentimes it's very painful, <laughs> but the, the vision keeps us going. Our North Star, that's, that's, that's what keeps us going. Well, thank you, Siggy. I appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to catch up. Thank and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hang out for uh, a good bit of the rest of the show, I imagine, anyway. So. Yeah, let's do it. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Bitcoin mining. Bitcoin Wallet, Blockchain, Stablecoins, Metanet, the evolution of money. Everybody is talking about Bitcoin today, but what exactly is it? Learn the basics from experts. Learn what Bitcoin is, how it works, and why it matters. Blockchain 101, your ultimate guide to the fundamentals of blockchain. BSV is more than another chaotic commodity craze. BSV blockchain can do more than just be a crypto investment. It can help you get more out of your games, share more of your art. BSV makes more things possible.